1 Corinthians 12, we all know it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Verse 14, we know, says, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Actually, Noah uh, read it out to us last week. Um, but from verse 18, it says, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honourable, we, dis- we bestow the greatest honour, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honour to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Love that. We are actually, and it wrecks your head when you really get the revelation that we are the actual body of Jesus on the earth. It just kind of messes up how you function, react, respond, and interact. So back in, um, we don't talk about our history tons, but back in 2009, um, Andy um, first went to Bethel Church in Reading in California, really probably on the back of a worship CD that kind of just the love of God wrecked his heart. And he was like, I'm never going to go and just see what this is all about, what's God doing. And when he was there, he he saw a church environment that was hosting the presence of God where people were being healed and there was all sorts of things happening. And actually then, Andy, as he is, went about kind of trying to figure out, well, how is this church like this? Like, what is it that is in this environment that allows them to host God's presence like this? And so when, you know, he came back, really since then as a church family, we've been on this journey of partnering with Holy Spirit to see the... I guess the soil of our environment, the culture that we have in our family, um, be one where God just doesn't visit us, but that actually he He actually inhabits us as a family, where he's got first place, where we have, you know, we're following his ways and not our ways. And really as part of this journey, we've sought to create a culture where where people are seen for who they are rather than what they do where we trust one another, we, we respond to one another because we value one another, um, where we celebrate and cheer one another on, where love one another isn't just a command, but actually part of just our nature, um, where we trust God in one another, where we posture our hearts to receive from one another. And that actually, as these verses we've just read say, that, that we actually, every part has the same care um, for the other, that we rejoice when someone's honoured, that we have a place on earth that increasingly looks um, like heaven where our love looks like honour, where our relationships reflect the family of heaven where you've got Jesus, Holy Spirit and Dad who function in this perfect love and perfect honour. And I just want to say this, we do have that in our midst. Actually, we do have a culture of honour in this family, Not, not perfectly, but growing and definitely established. And the foundation for that, and really the seedbed um, in which a culture of honour can grow, is one of um, love. Um, So we're going to read a few verses as we go this morning, um, and hopefully it will all become clear where we are headed as we go. So I just want to say well done. Well done for loving well, and you're amazing. I'll keep telling you that as we go. So Ephesians 4, Paul says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, we're to preserve the unity. We don't create it. Um, it's Holy Spirit is the one who creates it. But actually what builds that unity is love. And then Psalm 133, I love this verse. It's just the picture that it, that it presents when you think on really what's happening in it is awesome. It says this, How good and pleasant it is when brothers, that's us, 
dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls in the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. So not only is it good, it's also pleasant. That's, I mean, good and pleasant is pretty awesome. Uh, it is, I mean, like oil is fragrant. So it's, and it, you know, there's a lot of it then that's been described here. So it's abundant. So it's, it is abundantly good and awesome and pleasant and fragrant when actually we dwell together in unity. It, it releases a smell. Like that's pretty awesome. And actually God commands a blessing. So, so the, when we dwell together, like, what, like the realms of what that can look like and what God does in us and through us is is uh, yet to be fully experienced. Very exciting. And so we, um, you know, part of our journey as we've taught and talked, you know, Anne and I spoke last year on um, uh, the gifts um, of Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit. And so we are, um, we have an apostolic wineskin. We do have apostle, first prophet, second, third teacher in that order, the way scripture explains. And in an apostolic wineskin, I've mentioned this before, and we're still figuring out what this looks like, but I just want to remind us that the authority that we have in our family is a corporate authority. It doesn't belong to a person, doesn't belong to a gift. It belongs to Jesus, but it's actually the result of every one of us joining our hearts together in unity and individually adding the authority that we have, who God's created us to be, to that group and pointing it all towards him. And so what that means is like an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, or anyone like a Raj visiting us steps into a corporate authority which is already here and partners with heaven to release the thing that God wants to do in the room in that moment. And so actually when we when we worship together, like what happens this morning, I don't know if you've ever noticed, like sometimes we sing a song and maybe it's like last week when Tim led us so beautifully, we sing like, and there's no music and we're worshiping Jesus. And then it's like somehow in the inside, we all just know when to stop and the singing stops. And I, I, it just amazes me. I'm like, oh my goodness, like we really are actually this one body. And it messes me up because I'm like, how did we all know? How did we all know that we were to stop singing right then? And it's like somehow in the spirit, we just know that we actually are, are one. And so um, when, we, when we worship like that, we, something happens. We get deeply molded together. And then um, 1 Corinthians 12 says that it's by one spirit that we're baptized into one body. Actually, that is what happens when we get together and worship. And, and what happens as well is that our corporate authority, like who we are as a family and a people, it grows over time. Like there are... Things we come through, we keep giving our yes, that we stick with each other no matter what, when we come through challenges, it, that actually does something with us that increases. Ephesians 4 talks about us being fitted and held together by every joint supplying, that, that according to the proper working of every individual part, actually what happens is the, grow, the body grows and it is built up of itself in love, which is really hard to get your head around, but there's something huge about the way that we get built in God in love together and actually I think what we need to understand is that the way that we're being built together the way that we love the way that we honor one another actually is having far more of an impact than we realize you might think oh I've just come along today and I'm just sitting here no you're not actually you are having a huge impact because you are a joint that supplies life to someone else. We are, we're being built together. We are the body of Jesus on the earth. We're his dwelling place. We're his temple. And actually, Ephesians 3 tells us, talks to us about the manifold wisdom of God being made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places through the church. So we gather, we worship Jesus, we think, oh yeah, just having a nice time. Jesus, you're awesome. Actually, what's happening is the manifold wisdom of God is being made known through the church to the spirit realm and stuff shifts and is happening and we have not got a scooby. We really have no clue what just happened. And today in worship, I was like, God, what are you, what's actually happening right now as we worship here? And I felt him tell me that the, this area was being filled with his peace. That actually the people in these flats across the road and in those flats next door and in this area, actually peace was coming on them. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool actually. Just cause we're here, they got peace. 
which is amazing. But there's way more than that happens. That was just me asking for an example. So God has given us a mission. We are on a mission, if you didn't know, uh, to take God's presence into um, this city and this nation and beyond. Um, to see it transform, to see it become more, looking more like heaven because we're there. And so the possibilities of what that can look like, we just heard an example of what's going to happen over the Easter weekend, but the possibilities of what that can look like in your local community, where you live, where you work, where you go to the gym, where you buy your shopping, um, and actually into the rest of the city are endless. When I look out at these, all of you, absolute legends, all of you, like, you're just incredible. The potential and the possibility in this room is humongous. It's a good word to explain how vast and massive it is that actually, you know, what you guys can do, how you can reach out and impact the world with the love of God is, is just beyond beyond. But actually what we can do together as well, like what we can do as a family, like an Easter weekend or, you know, join in our hearts with one another to partner with what God's speaking is about, that's also endless. But the other thing, also endless, we don't get our heads around, is the spiritual impact that we're having as we host his presence on a Sunday morning. Like the way that we love and honor one another, the way we worship him, actually we are having an impact in this city. It is richer and better off because we're here than if we weren't. And so I think you need to hear that. Like what you do on a Sunday has massive significance in the city of Glasgow. It's not just about you, oh, thank goodness I got out of my bed. Actually, you're powerful and you're mighty and your being here has a massive impact on our city. So I just want you to ask Jesus this question. Um, Jesus, is there anything that you would like me to do or any ways you'd like me to grow in showing honour this year? So Jesus, are there any, is there anything you'd like me to do or any ways that you'd like me to grow in showing honour this year? Great, so hopefully he's shown you something. You can keep talking to him about that because actually he wants us to love one another. Actually, and a great way of doing that is, you know, practical ways that we... Um, grow, show, and display honour. So I guess just to answer the next bit of what I'm going to talk about is why controlled lips? Um, so I, at the moment, I believe that the most, the way that we see most persecution in the West um, in church comes from other believers persecuting other believers. We're not being faced, you know, with guns to our head on a daily basis like some parts of the world. And so I think the thing just to remember is that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, the father of lies, the deceiver, the one who steals, kills, and destroys, and he is against us. He doesn't like us, doesn't like us at all. And But the thing that we cannot ever forget is that Satan has got no authority because Jesus took it all back from him, triumphed over him at the cross, made a public spectacle of him, took all of his authority back, and... Uh, all authority has been given to us. So he has none. All authority has been given to us. He has none. And the only time that he can get any authority is if we give him some of it. When we believe his lies, when we partner with him, then we, or if we give him a foothold, then he can use us to do his bidding, which could look like us complaining about someone. It could look like criticism or slander or judgment or accusation could look like making assumptions or gossiping or spreading rumors. And we all know that those things are poison to uh, the soil of our, in our hearts and they affect and infect the whole body. That's us. Um, and so we need to really be wise not to be deceived by his nonsense and have the courage to take responsibility for our environment together. So I just want to say this. This is my encouragement moment. Amazingly, we don't have those things present in our family right now. And it is a thing of beauty that we have a clean, lovely, beautiful environment and atmosphere. So well done and thank you for the part that you have played in keeping it that way. Now let's, let's keep doing that. Let's be vigilant over our own hearts. Let's be vigilant with one another uh, over the way that we're, what we're thinking, what we're believing, what we're saying. Because you know that out of the overflow of our hearts, the mouth speaks. And so if you find yourself saying something, I love Philippians 4, but if you find yourself saying something that is not holy or true or noble or right or pure or lovely or admirable or excellent or praiseworthy, 
then you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we need to really, any lies we've been believing need to be rooted out. So we need to be chatting to Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me get this out of me. I don't want to believe this lie about this person. I don't want to have this repeated thought cycle pattern. Get someone to pray with you. Like, let's be great at helping one another. Um, or if you hear someone say something, be like, hang on a minute. That's not who you are. That's not how we talk around here. Um, and actually, you know, we have blind spots. Sometimes we're grumpy and uh, we just said something and we didn't really mean it. And so we need people to call it out and be like, hmm. That sounded like a bit of criticism there. Are you sure that's really what you think about them? Um, so let's be great, actually, at being, you know, we're a body, we're joined together, and we want to, we have to understand that we impact the whole with our words, with our attitudes, with our hearts, but we want to be, we want to be gloriously awesome. We are gloriously awesome. Let's keep being like that. Um, so I just want to... Fire out a couple of reminders. We all know this, but just reminding you. A few reminders from Scripture. I will actually post these because I didn't do a PowerPoint for you. And I'm going to go through them quickly because we've got a few things to cover before we do some ministry. Um, and these are from a few different versions of the Bible too. But just a reminder of how we want to continue to function. Ready. James 4.11. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Galatians 6.1, if someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Matthew 7, 1 to 2, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I mean, that's pretty clear. Proverbs 25, 8, don't jump to conclusions. There may be a perfectly good explanation for what you just saw. Galatians 5, 1, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. Romans 12, 10, love one another with brotherly affection. What does that look like? Outdo do one another. That's the only verse, by the way, in scripture that is encouraging competitiveness. Outdo one another in showing honor. And finally, Romans 12, 16, live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be as mindful of one another's worth as you are your own. So there will always be, and there will continue to be, plenty of opportunities for us to jump to conclusions, to feel offended or rejected, to be tempted to judge someone in our heart. But let us choose to refrain from doing that. Um, if something happens, let's be great at taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and really keep a posture of love in our hearts towards one another. Um, a practical key that I use is to choose to believe the best in someone. That's my first go-to. Remind myself of all the great things that I know about that person and then arrange to meet them or speak to them very quickly and to check what it is that's happened. A phrase to remember, help me understand. So, you know, when this thing happened, help me understand. Like, what were you meaning? Because I might have misunderstood uh, help me understand, like, why did you do that when we agreed we were going to do this? What was your thinking on that? And so as part of, of actually keeping our hearts open and surrendered to him, let's also be quick to deal with any unforgiveness. Um, we don't, because that unforgiveness has, like, consequences of bitterness and anger. And um, we, I would just say this, have a regular MOT question in your life, which is, Holy Spirit, is there anyone I need to forgive? And if so, why? Holy Spirit, is there anyone I need to forgive? And if so, why? Just do that regularly. Once a month, a couple of times, once a quarter. And then if there is anybody, just, you know, forgive them. Help, ask God to help you to do that. Get someone to pray with you if you need it. John uh, 13, 35 says this, By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And that word know there actually means to be aware, to feel, to be sure or understand. So by this, all will be aware, feel, be sure or understand that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. So our ability to love well, actually when, when we meet people who don't believe in Jesus yet or someone comes to visit us, actually our ability to love well means that people around us should actually feel his love in our midst because actually 
because we're his disciples. We're, he, loves, he lives in us. We live in him. We're all joined. It's amazing. It's glorious. Wonderful. So we know that God is love. And I came across recently just this um, this uh, suggestion uh, in a book I was reading about, you know, the, the 1 Corinthians 3 four to seven, like love is patient, love is kind, to actually take that. And I really encourage you to do this, like we homework exercise, to take the word love, because God is love, put his name in there, and then speak it out loud, and then put your own name in there. So for example, um, it's really powerful as a declaration. So, you know, love bears up under anything and everything that comes, and it's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Jan bears up under anything and is and everything that comes and Jan is ever ready to believe the best of every person. What a great declaration. Let's just be speaking. This is how we want to function. And God bears up under anything and everything that comes. God is ever ready to believe the best in every person. Um, you know, God is love. You know, God is patient. God is kind. Jan is patient. Jan is kind. You know, let's, so I just encourage you to give it a try because we need to remember to treat people as though we can see God standing inside of them. And that is a really helpful way to do that. So why hearts that slay giants? I was asking myself that question. I'm like, we need to just answer this question. Like, why? Why hearts that slay giants? Why are we even doing this? Because it is all about love. That's my answer for you. Tick. Here we go. Because Lo love is actually our weapon. Jesus tells us to abide in his love, which is awesome. And then one of the most outrageous verses um, Actually, no, that's not the, there is another most outrageous one. But he says in verse 12 in John 15, love one another as I have loved you. And we cannot love like him unless we first receive it, actually. And so the way that it works is we receive the, God's love. We then have an ability to return and give that love back to him. And then actually what happens is the Holy Spirit helps us to become love because that's who he is in us and then release love. But we can't, do, we can't do that. It starts the receiving. And actually, we really need to have an encounter with the love of God um, to be able to, like regularly, I would say, and, and just be super open to that so that anything that is fear that stands in the way of us expressing love, because we know that fear is the enemy of love. Actually, fear can scare us away from evangelism, stops us praying for, you know, hopeless cases, stops us from going into dark places with his light. Fear stops us from... Uh, it holds us back from being vulnerable with one another and love actually is the answer it is and I, when I was asking God I was like what do you what do you want to say to these wonderful people today and I just felt like he wanted me to say to you that to commend you that was the word he used I want you to commend them for the way that they love and I felt like he said that he, he wanted me to tell you that there is more so I just want to commend you for the way that you love. And I want to tell you that there is more. There's more for you to experience and grasp and understand of his love that is beyond, beyond. This is the crazy verse I was getting to that is messes you up. Not crazy, wonderful. John 17, 26, Jesus prayed the, that the love, this is him praying to the Father, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. That is a lot of love. Like they... The, the, the Trinity have been together since forever, never, 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 before they even thought about creating humans or the world. And actually the love with which the Father loves Jesus, Jesus is praying that that love would be in us and that he would be in us. That is a lot of love, actually. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, we're going to move in just a moment to time of ministry, but what I felt to do was, I, I've, I'm just going with what I saw, so just bear with me as I try and explain it. So if you have been in part of Hope Church or connected to it, because you maybe did our school for 10 years or more, I would like to ask you to stand to your feet, please. Um, so I just want to say this, for those of you who are sitting down, the people that are on their feet, um, they have lived through many moments in our family's history, some absolutely gloriously incredible, some very challenging, some emotional, some difficult. But every one of you has kept a great heart posture and you have kept running the race. You haven't sat down. You have said yes to God when it was tough or scary. And you've kept hold of God and you've kept hold of one another. And I just want to thank you 
And I want to publicly honour you for not giving up on him or one another. That actually what he is doing in our midst is huge. And you guys have spotted that and seen it. And so what we're going to do, if you, in a moment, you can sit back down now. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you. Let's just give them a round of applause. Um, what I'm going to have some of these guys do, we probably won't need to have all of you. I'm going to have them in a moment form a prayer tunnel. And uh, it's one of the things that we've been praying about as elders, leaders, and on a Wednesday morning early at 7 a.m., um, has been praying that we would all, uh, this year, all of us, every age, would have a fresh encounter with the love of God in the first part of this year. And so we're going to have some of these folks um, come up and we're going to form a, a prayer tunnel. Um, and I really felt like what's going to happen is there's, for some of us, I feel like what's going to happen is something is going to take root inside of us that God's going to sow inside of us that we're not going to see. Maybe anything happened today, but that in time, something is going to completely shift in the way that we function and respond and act is going to be completely different. For others of you, you might just actually just feel the overwhelming love of God and be overwhelmed. Um, but the important thing is that he's looking for our yes and our cooperation for the more that he said that he has in store for us. And once you've gone through the tunnel, we're going to have the beautiful Lucy and the beautiful Jess are going to hug. If you're a woman, as you come through the tunnel, you're going to get a hug from Lucy or Jess. And if you're a man, you're going to come through and you're going to be hugged by Steve or by Ian. And I really felt like the hug was a really important part that actually God was going to seal in you. So that what's been deposited in you by him was going to be sealed in the hug. And that that's a really key part. So if you're a man, you go to the men. If you're a woman, to the women. Um, so before we get into position, um, I just wanted to pray over us because um, God's love is based entirely on his character it is, and his nature. It is unchanging, it is constant, it is full and deep and permanent and it's so great that we actually can't receive it unless he gives us the supernatural ability to do that. And so I would just want to invite you, we're just gonna, if you're okay with this, put your hand on your heart and I'm just going to pray uh, read and pray Ephesians 3 over all of us before we do some ministry. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives completely filled and flooded with God himself. Amen. <laughs>